Hello, my name is John Rocco Macari. We're out here today on Magician Lake. We're going to be telling you a little bit about the boat that I built, the Loretta Lynn. It was built, uh, started out June 2016, wrapped her up June of 2017. So, got about a year invested in it. Uh, it was my first time building a vessel like this, so there was there was a little bit of trial and error. Um, she's built to uh, Spira International's plan for the Caledesi Dory, which is a 20 foot long Carolina style dory. Um, I shortened her up a little bit. She's six here. She's 18 six inches. It helps her fit in the garage a little easier, but she still has the wide beam of the original Caledesi, which is nice. You'll be able to see that it's a nice roomy layout. You got room for at least five people in here comfortably. Um, powered her up with a 25 horsepower Mercury. Um, you'll see in the videos that that gets her moving along fast enough to get to the fishing hole. And as far as the layout goes, we just have a Ford seat in the middle, which has a coffin lid for storage. We've got cedar decks to an open bilge. We got a stern seat. Um, that was all, um, you know, field plan. That doesn't come with the plans. Um, I just laid that out as far as uh, I thought it made it a little more structurally sound, and it's relatively practical. Um, got to fit out with some fishing rod holders. Primarily, we're going to be fishing in this vessel. Um, up here, we gave it an oak and marine ply bow deck with a cable here for a little bit of storage, kind of like a basket effect here, and that's working out real nice. We got all our life jackets and things in there. Just want to take some time to tell the story of why the boat, we decided to name it the Loretta Lynn. My wife and I, we spent a lot of time talking about our grandparents. Both of us grew up living with our grandparents, and those years that I lived with my grandparents and uh, talking to my great uncles, I learned a lot about uh, the history of the family and uh, one common history that Jen and I share in our family is that for a while they were coal miners and actually for a lot longer than a while. Um, to speak first about my side, um, the Macaris, they were coal miners going back who knows how long. We don't have as much history on them but Dominic Macari came over with his wife Lucia who my first daughter's named after and they mined uh, in Kansas out of a little town called Frontenac. My grandpa spent one day in the mine and didn't like it, moved to Chicago. And uh, his brother Barney, he spent a couple years down there during the Depression mining before he moved up to Chicago. But my grandmother Edith on the Pathy side, her sisters, Vicki and Dora, they were all coal miners' daughters too. Uh, their father was uh, Louis Pathy, and he came from a little town in Italy called Sigillo. And when we went to visit those people that still live in Sigillo, we thought we might find out something, you know, hey, what did our family do when they were in Italy? Well, they were coal miners, it was no surprise. And I think going back as long as you can imagine, they were working in some kind of mine or construction. They would travel to Rome, do construction projects there, go north to, uh, I think they said, uh, Firenze. And that was the family business, you know. And then on Jen's side of the family, we have Betty, and her father was Frank Littner. And Frank Littner, who came from, I think Czechoslovakia, somewhere in like the Austro-Hungarian Empire, he also worked in the mines. And he worked down in um, Southern Indiana. And I'd like to take a second to thank Jeff Spira, his website. Um, I thank him for the decent plans. It, it worked out great. I thank him for the instructional videos on there, and especially all the guys that built boats along the way that made those videos, especially the one with, um, I believe it was uh, a, it was a more like a Pacific Power Dory that a guy built in Florida. I can't remember his name right now, but he'll know who he is. And watching those videos on the Spire International website gave me the confidence to build a boat like this. So hopefully this helps with anybody that's considering it. As long as you know, you can go on the website, YouTube, it's basic tools. Um, you don't have to really, you know, get too tooled up. It's basic stuff that most guys have. It just takes a lot of determination. You gotta love making sawdust. You gotta love sweeping it up. Uh, a lot of sanding involved, but you stick with it. About a year down the road, you'll have a boat like this. You know, I, I really feel that anybody that has any kind of experience with building or tools can accomplish this. So, you know, thanks again for uh, inspiring me to do this. So I know I had it in me, and I'm, it's, it's a great feeling to have accomplished it, and I just thank you for helping me out along the way.
solid.